Back in the distant past of a couple of months ago, we released a video about modern games that do a great job of capturing a particular retro vibe. Games that through the art, skill, and know-how of the developers really managed to take us back to simpler times when we'd nag our parents to buy us the latest titles instead of spending our own dwindling funds on them and having to exist on beans on toast for the rest of the month because we absolutely had to play Pokemon Scarlet on release day. Well, dear viewers, we're back again, hoping to recapture the vibe of our previous video by bringing you 10 more delightfully retro modern titles that really did a number on our nostalgia senses. Remember, it's not good enough to just be influenced by older games or have a pixel art aesthetic. In order to make this list, a game really has to feel like it's from that time, even if it is through trickery, using modern gameplay and ideas in a way that evokes the classic without simply replicating them. So let us once again present you with a gallery of modern titles that are sure to take you back to the golden years of gaming and maybe make you feel all cozy and nostalgic inside too. I'm the perfectly timeless Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 more modern titles that perfectly capture the retro vibe. Number 10. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles – Shredder's Revenge One genre that particularly embodies retro gaming is the good old side-scrolling beat-em-up, and one franchise that helped define said genre is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or Hero Turtles if you want to get weird, unnecessary censorship about this. Those lean, mean, green amphibians lit up arcades and home consoles with their side-scrolling adventures, and it's rare to find a 90s gamer who didn't enjoy some pizza-fueled violence at least once or twice. Tribute Games' 2022 beat-em-up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge absolutely revels in what made those old turtle-based side-scrollers so much fun featuring bright graphics, cool tunes, and instantly accessible gameplay. Want to master the combat and go for zero death runs on the hardest difficulty? Go for it! Want to button mash and just enjoy the spectacle? Well, you'll have a great time too. Up to six players can get involved for maximum cartoony chaos, and soon enough there'll be so many turtles, rats, rhinos, and warthogs flying around the screen that it'll resemble an explosion at the local zoo. If your local zoo houses humanoids mutated by radioactive ooze, that is. And if so, could you please let me know where it is in the comments? That's something I would love to see. Number 9. Unmetal the next game on our list harkens back to a time before Konami's Metal Gear franchise made the jump to 3D. These top-down military action games successfully merged stealth-based gameplay with an action movie atmosphere, with the first Metal Gear even cheekily using the likeness of 80s and 90s action star Michael Bean on its cover. While the Metal Gear series would definitely go on to find its own identity, modern 2D stealth action game Unmetal takes things back to that early early action movie feel and plants its tongue firmly in its cheek too. Released in 2021 by Unepic Entertainment, Unmetal sees players step into the stealthy shoes of Jesse Fox, a military operative who was imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit. The game follows his story as he escapes from the base he's been imprisoned in, narrated, possibly unreliably, by the man himself. Throughout Unmetal, you'll be sneaking around guards, beating up toilets, and using your valuable medkits to heal enemies Jesse got a bit too rough with. The gameplay uses Fox's narration to interesting effect, and Unmetal's neat ideas, humor, great pixel art, and cool atmosphere elevate it from a distracting parody to an excellent retro experience in its own right. We're just waiting on the Unmetal sequels now, Ungear and Unsolid. Number 8. Axiom Verge it's quite easy to forget, considering the penchant Nintendo now has for brightly coloured worlds full of cute and non-threatening enemies, but the Metroid series definitely had an unsettling atmosphere in the early days of the company. I mean, it's not exactly dead space, but those 2D worlds still convey a palpable sense of isolation in clandestine facilities on alien worlds from its 8-bit inception right up to the appropriately titled Metroid Dread. 2015 
Metroidvania Axiom Verge takes its cues from the 2D Metroid games, and doubles down on that unfamiliarity and isolation. Talented indie developer Thomas Happ has created a world with a creepy, almost Giga-esque atmosphere that's as sinister as it is mysterious, and features a sci-fi story setup that will entice you in to try and uncover its dreadful secrets. With its great bosses, challenging but fair difficulty, tight controls, and swathe of power-ups backing up its awesome setting, Axiom Verge is a wonderful throwback to the likes of Super Metroid and a time when pixelated worlds fill with wonder and trepidation in equal measure. If there's one thing I've learned over years of gaming, it's not to trust complex alien facilities whose structures have a creepy biological feel. Not sure how I feel about that giant jawless tube lady either. This guy looks pretty friendly though, right? Number 7. Project Warlock if you're familiar with some of the more fantastical and occult first-person games of yesteryear, then you'll be able to identify Project Warlock's influences straight away. Creepy horror shooter Blood and the sinister fantasy worlds of Heretic and Hexen come to mind when we cast our eyes over this 2018 FPS game. It's not just the visuals of early-era shooters that Project Warlock emulates, either, as the fast-paced gameplay and dark fantasy ambience all add to that 90s shooter to feel. The atmosphere is further enhanced by the unnamed protagonist's ability to wield devastating spells as well as guns and melee weapons, and the developers have sprinkled in some light RPG elements for good measure. This all results in an action fantasy shooter where experienced FPS fanatics and new players alike can explore Dungeons & Dragons style environments with weapons lifted straight out of Doom or Wolfenstein. Sounds like a fabulous couple of evenings to me. Additionally, the fact that Project Warlock so handily evokes the likes of Blood and Hexen is extra impressive when you learn that Jacob Sislow, the game's creator, wasn't even born when they came out, being only 18 at the time of development. An impressive feat, I suppose, for a youngster. <laughs> what? Jealousy? Don't know what you're talking about. Number 6. Hotline Miami Remember the first Grand Theft Auto? Remember getting out of your car and gunning down gangsters, lawmen, and civilians with reckless abandon? That was pretty wild, right? Well, Hotline Miami takes this particular style of gameplay and turns it up to 11. No, 12 even. Looking like GTA Vice City if it was an old-school top-down shooter, Hotline Miami was originally released in 2012 and took its players on a blood-soaked, ultra-violent journey through the seedy underground of 1980s Miami. Neon palm trees and snappy white suits await as you take control of the unnamed protagonist, a man dubbed Jacket by fans, who is tasked with performing hits on members of the local criminal underworld. Things take a turn for the surreal as the game progresses, though, with Jacket's grip on reality slipping as events unfold. Masked entities, unexplainable deaths, and talking corpses are just some of the strange events our violent anti-hero will have to deal with with over the course of the game. While playing like a retro top-down shooter, Hotline Miami uses its visuals, sound, and gameplay to tell a David Lynch-influenced story that also brings to mind the violent thrillers of its era. This is gory, unsettling, adult stuff. And great synthy music, too, perfect for accompanying those hot, violent Miami nights. Number 5. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2019 Castlevania homage Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a modern take on the classic Metroidvania gameplay of its predecessors, developed by former Castlevania series producer Koji Igarashi. Undeniably a great game that evokes its forebears, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is an updated continuation of the series' traditions, rather than an attempt to take you back to your first forays into Castlevania's universe. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon was developed as a result of a stretch goal being reached in Ritual of the Night's funding, and was perceived as a retro-style accompaniment to the main event. Developers Inti Creates did a fantastic job of capturing the feel of those NES Castlevania titles, adding in tough gameplay, cool music, and branching pathways, much like 1989's Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. It also gave players the ability to switch between three characters on the fly, and use this feature to add some meat to the combat 
at platforming and puzzles. Castlevania fans should count themselves lucky, really, receiving a modern continuation of your favourite classic franchise and a retro reimagining, both with the involvement of the director of the original games, is a pretty rare treat for anyone. Some people are more fans of, say, Zool or James Pond or something. And what have they got? Nothing. That's what. Number 4. Faith, the Unholy Trinity Apple II, ZX Spectrum, and Atari 2600-era games often portrayed events and environments that would have been creepy if the developers had more power to play with. Attic Attack, to choose an example that's been recently re-released as part of the Rare Replay package, depicted characters exploring dingy rooms in a haunted castle, fighting off sinister hooded figures and other creepy denizens. However, thanks to its quaint visuals and bleepy bloopy sound effects, it doesn't really muster much of an atmosphere by today's standards. But that's where Faith the Unholy Trinity comes in. Players take control of a priest who's trying to undo the effects of a failed exorcism, and developers Airdorf Games have used the limited sound and graphics to sinister effect. Offbeat music, disturbing screeches, and distorted, era-faithful digital speech all add to a spine-tingling atmosphere that may well unlock fears older players haven't felt since they were a Spectrum-playing kid who was afraid of the darkness at the top of the stairs. The game even throws in some quote-unquote real recordings of electronic voice phenomena phenomena too, where ghostly voices are thought to have been caught on modern recording equipment. Creepily digitized voices are one thing, but creepy voices from actual ghosts? Oh, it's enough to scare you to death. And then you'd be able to record some EVP because you'd be a ghost. Number 3. Signalis Developed by Rose Engine, 2022's Signalis evokes all that was great about early PS1-era horror titles, but leaves the clunkiness behind. You see, Signalis bears a resemblance to the original Resident Evil, but the gameplay has been modernized in a way that makes it easier to play while still paying homage to those classic tropes. The story is mostly set in an interstellar mining facility, and involves rogue artificial lifeforms and the protagonist's hazy, mysterious flashbacks to happier times. Like in the games it was influenced by, there are plenty of inventory-based puzzles to solve as the narrative unfolds, and players can only save in certain safe rooms, adding to the tense retro feel. Wandering hostile replica units will stagger about and attack much like Resident Evil zombies would, and they take a fair few shots to put down, too. There's even a CRT mode, so you can really feel like you're playing your PS1 in your old bedroom again. In many ways, Signalis is the perfect game for those who've been craving the proper old-school Resident Evil experience, but don't want to put up with certain outdated gameplay aspects and those fiddly tank controls. I do kind of wish the characters had feet, though, but, you know, I guess you can't have everything. Number 2. Proteus You'll permit us one more FPS, right viewers? After all, who doesn't like running around at top speed while blasting things old school style? Unlike Project Warlock mentioned earlier in the video and Ion Fury from our previous list, 2020's Proteus puts a decidedly modern visual sheen on top of the classic gameplay, giving it a feel that's reminiscent of Doom 2016. Just like that game, however, it is old school at heart. But why play Proteus when you can play, well, Doom 2016? Well, while id Software's reboot added things like contextual melee kills to the gameplay mix, Proteus keeps things a lot simpler. This is a 90s shooter through and through, with gameplay that consists entirely of running around really fast, shooting things in the face, and finding the odd secret area. Once you get to grips with the gameplay and controls, you can find yourself achieving a zen-like state of meditative control as you perpetrate ultra-violence on your enemies, redecorating Proteus's traditional industrial environments with a satisfying shade of crimson. Like I say, zen. Meditation. Hmm. And I really mean that too, about the crimson. By the time you're finished with the level, walls, floors, and ceilings will be almost entirely coated in bad guy blood. Talk about painting the town red. And number one, Shovel Knight. The protagonist of 2014 retro-style hit Shovel Knight is a knight with a shovel. I know, it's a revelation. You don't get this sort of video gaming insight just anywhere on the internet, you know? 
Taking control of the gardening implement wielding protagonist in this 8 bit inspired platform adventure, players will find themselves doing all the usual nightly stuff, like exploring dangerous realms and fighting the forces of evil, but they'll also be doing a fair bit of excavating, too. The titular Shovel Knight will use his tool to dig through walls and uncover secrets, and will also use it to take on enemies, bouncing around like it's a particularly dangerous pogo stick. While the humor and visual style of Shovel Knight definitely exhibit a modern slant, the excellent gameplay captures that joyous and bouncy yet challenging appeal of the best platformers of old. Reviewers rightly praised the game for being delightfully retro yet fresh and innovative too, and the eponymous hero shoveled his way into gamers' hearts the world over. Shovel Knight has a huge amount to offer fans of modern retro games, and fits the theme of this list perfectly. Basically, if you dig 8 bit era platformers, then you'll definitely dig this. D dig, because he's got a shovel. I told you that at the start of the entry. Come on, keep up.